Good morning, Ms. Hofmeier. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Chair. Yes, are we ready? We are indeed. Yes. Okay. You're Thank you. Yes. Uh, Ms. Mamela, we were at the end of yesterday's evidence dealing with your involvement in the various components <coughs> tenders for SART. Um, and the one point I want to pick up on is um, Ms. Sambo provided to the Commission a series of WhatsApp communications between yourself and her. Uh, you'll find them in DD18, and you can pick it up at page 532. Exhibit DD18, page 532. Ms. Mamela, are you fine this morning? I'm okay, Chair. Okay, all right. You, you didn't look uh, fine oh. to me. <laughs> okay, all right. Page. Are you able to find the bundle? Um, DD18. Yeah, the bundle is here. And page, page 532. Ms. Mamela, uh, yesterday your evidence was that you denied having given um, Ms. Sambo pricing information on a flash disk. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Ms. Mamela, if you'll just turn on your, um, your microphone. Mic. Oh. Mm. So Thanks. let me just ask the question again for the record. Uh, your evidence yesterday was that you denied giving pricing information to Ms. Uh, Sambo on a flash disk. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Did you give pricing information to her relevant to the tenders at any other point? Uh, as I said she yesterday, that it would be um, relevant pricing from the market, uh, on the market uh, at that time. For instance, like information that is, n is known to us at procurement, not because it's, fr it's coming from the CFST. Sorry, so let me just get clear. You do admit to giving pricing information to Ms. Sambo, is that right? No, I'm not admitting. I'm saying it would not be the pricing information that is coming from the CFSC, the Bid Evaluation Committee. But, Ms. Mamela, we need to focus on the specific question. We can break it up, if we may, in due course. But first of all, what is your version on whether at any point you gave pricing information to Ms. Sambo? Chair, I said I do not remember giving Mr. Sambo, Ms. Sambo any information on the tender, pricing Thank information. You. And Chair, just to add the, these WhatsApp messages, this is the first time I see them today. Yes. Uh, so like, like, yes. like the memory stick, yes. I don't, I'm not sure of the authenticity of them. Yes. Yes, Chair. Okay. No, that's fine. So I would like my lawyer to... That, 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 yeah. That's fine. Well, she, she will ask you questions and uh, we'll see uh, if you are able to answer or if there's any problem. Okay, sure. Yes. Uh, Ms. Mbandra? Thank you, Chair. I just want to draw the attention of the Chair to the fact that these uh, SMSs or WhatsApp messages, we have the same objection that we had to the alleged information from the flash disk because we do not know whether this information is the genuine information that was downloaded. So before cross-examination or asking questions on this information, we would be happy if we can be given an opportunity to make an application so that we can test the authenticity thereof. And in a way, Chair, I'm not making this request on an idle basis. I was phoned this morning by someone who said there is information which she knows was at CIPRO in a particular format, and it seems as if that information has been tampered with. It is not concerning this matter of Ms. Memela, but I'm just saying that it seems as if in these matters where there is electronic evidence, 
there are problems? Yeah, no, I don't think it's a matter for an objection. Miss um, Hofmeyer may put questions to Miss Memela on the WhatsApp messages, but you do have, uh, you'll be given an opportunity to make whatever investigations and uh, uh, challenge the validity uh, in due course if you want to challenge uh, anything. But she will be able to say, I'm able to answer this because I know I've never sent such a message. Or she will say, I don't remember whether I sent a message. And then we'll take it from there. Ms. Pamela, I'd just like to pick up on the point that you made a moment ago that this is the first time you're seeing these WhatsApp messages. Mm. You received Rule 33 notices more than 16 days before Ms. Samba was going to testify that she was going to testify, did you not? I did, Chipperson, and, and these messages were not part of that. That's correct. Yeah. And in that notice, you were notified that one of your rights was to be present during her evidence, which was going to commence on Tuesday last week. Do you recall seeing that in the notice? Yes, I recall that. Yeah. And when you began your evidence, you indicated that you had followed some of the evidence last week. Is that correct? I followed some of the evidence. What do you mean? Uh, some, some of uh, the evidence presented by Ms. Sambo. I followed it. Yes. She, she's saying when you began your evidence yes. last week, you, you said that you had followed some of Ms. Sambo's evidence. Yes, I'd gone through some of the attachments that I uh, received from the commission. Uh, I, I thought you indicated that you'd watched some of the evidence uh, from home. No, I didn't. You I, didn't. I even said Chair, yesterday, I heard from people that mm -hmm. were talking uh, that they, she's talking about a certain memory stick that she has eventually found. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I heard. And the reason why I decided not to watch Ms. Sambo's video uh, before I come to testify. It was because I didn't want to distract myself emotionally. I wanted to prepare and not focus on her uh, assertions. So I thought I would uh, watch her videos only when I come to cross-examine her. Mm. Yes, Jim. Um, Ms. Pamela, you see, the challenge I have with that is that uh, on Wednesday last week, you communicate, Ms. Sambo started her evidence on Tuesday and she continued her evidence on Wednesday. And on the afternoon of Wednesday last week, you sent an email to the commission indicating that you did not intend to appear for your evidence on Friday. So how could it have been that you were using that time to prepare for your evidence when your communication to the commission on Wednesday was that you did not intend to appear? Uh, Chair, I'm, I'm not sure if Ms. Hoffman <coughs> listens to me when I speak. I did not say I used that time to pre prepare for evidence. I said the reason why I chose not to watch Ms. Sambo's uh, videos was to ensure that I don't distract myself while I'm pre preparing myself to come and appear here. Yes, I have uh, um, um, said on, when, on Thursday, I don't know what, which day did I send my email between Wednesday and Thursday, that I, I'm waiting for my lawyer who is in Cape Town and I heard um, from somebody saying, okay, the, 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 the chairperson had said, uh, I will need to be here, and then I see if I will apply for postponement and stuff. Then I decided on that last day that I'll be coming tomorrow morning. Uh, let's go to what is recorded in this WhatsApp message at page 535. Uh, and the part that I'm interested in is a fairly long message uh, from yourself, it's indicated as Nonsasa Sart Mamela, and it's against Did you the say 535, Ms. Hoffman? Apologies, I might have. I meant 532, Chair. 532? Five, five, yes. Okay. okay. Um, and where the relevant communication is, is just below halfway down the page. You'll see the last date entered on the left-hand side is 2017-0320. And the time is at 2100 hours, 44 minutes and 19 seconds. And then it indicates that the communication comes from Nonsasa Sart Mamela. And then what follows is what Ms. Sambo said in her evidence was a WhatsApp message she received from you. Uh, I'd like you to move down that to about a third of the way in that discussion. Uh, because it is there that it is recorded in this WhatsApp message uh, under the name of Nonsasa Sart Mamela. 
uh, that the following appears. It's e it begins with the sentence, even before that. Do you see that? Yeah. Uh, it says there, even before that, when you wanted price info for Cheryl, I what? gave that no, no, to no. you. No, 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 where are you reading it? So, uh, are you in the last communication on that page that begins with 2017-0320? Chair, can, yes. I, can I request, uh, since I have not read these, I would ask Ms. Hofmeyer to read the whole thing. Certainly. Mm. That's fine. Yeah, right, so yeah. we're starting in the I last one on that page. Um, and uh, Ms. Mamela, it begins, so she said, this is your communication to Ms. Sambo. So she said, by the time you got to her, you were ready to show her the info, Ooh. which made her uncomfortable because she started asking herself if you had shown it to someone else. You were even contemplating to call City Press to give them the info. Now, my sister, all I want to know is uh, when... Just one second, uh, Ms. Hoffman, don't forget where you are. Are you able, have you been able to identify where she is, I where have, she's reading? I have identified, oh, Chair. Okay, right. yeah. Thank okay. you, Chair. Um, let me pick it up from now. My sister, all I want to know is, when did this become about me? When did I become your sudden enemy? Apparently, you said to her, I'm the one who forced you not to work with AAR. I was on speed dial because every decision you took, it was my advice. Hi, Bo. I was you should... I was really shocked. All I ever did for you was to help. Even the info that you are using now was sent to you in good faith to help you. Even before that, when you wanted price info for Cheryl, I gave that to you, as I never thought you would one day plan to use it against me. Let's stop there. Uh, that appears to be a reference to you confirming that you gave price information to Ms. Sambo when she wanted it for Cheryl. I assume that's a reference to Cheryl Jackson. Is that correct? Yes, Shade, it looks like that, but at the same time, as I said, it, it might be price information that is a standard knowledge from a su supply chain. So uh, it's not uh, price info from the CFST, as I had indicated earlier, that I do not sit in CFST. Why would she be using it okay, against you? Hang then? on one second, oh. Ms. Mbandra. Uh, thank you, Chair. Mm. I must once more raise my serious reservations about the prejudicial nature of this information. Yes. Apart from the fact that we have placed on record the fact that we are not happy with the authenticity, whether it really came from Ms. Memela. But there is a second problem here, the identification of the information. It is said that you wanted price info for Cheryl. Uh, I believe that it would be in our best interest and remove the element of prejudice to Ms. Memela if Ms. Hofmeyer can say, this price info, it was price info that related to what? Because if we are to re-examine... No, but she's just reading an email that the investigators believe came from her and uh, an email that Ms. Sambo says came from her. Uh, she, she's not uh, talking about something else. She's just reading what is here and asking Ms. Memela to comment yes, on, on, on that. Yes, Assuming yes. that uh, the, 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 this came from her uh, uh, phone. Uh, ch Chair, mm. with all respects, I don't want to be argumentative. Yes. But I would like to remind Chair of the prefacing mm. statement, which mm. started yesterday and was repeated today. Yes. It was said that you shared pricing information mm. of the tenders with mm. the bidders. Mm. And now today, Ms. Hofmeyer has again said, are you denying that you shared this pricing information? So the understanding, given the context that has been set by Ms. Hofmeyer, is that this is pricing information for the tenders or for the bids which were uh, currently in operation. It is for that reason why we are of the humble view that we need to have Ms. Hofmeyer, she can identify it and say, this was the pricing information that pertained to a specific bid. 
so that when we deal with this question in re-examination, then we can be able to dispute that actually, and when we have this information, which is allegedly in this flash disk, then we can compare if really this information that is in the flash disk is the information that was in, in, in the said tender. Well, uh, Ms. Hofmeyer has heard what you say. She will indicate uh, how she intends proceeding. It seems to me that you, 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 you think there is some uncertainty about uh, whether the information, price information, relates to a specific tender or not. Yes, Chair. Actually, that is where the element of prejudice comes in. Mm. It's because a statement has been made that mm. information that pertains to tenders mm. and is pricing information, which is obviously very sensitive information, has been shared by Ms. Nemela. Yes. In all fairness, that information needs to be identified because I'm not going to be in a position to re-examine if I can't even say what pricing information is. But what, I think what, Chair understands my difficulty. I understand. What, 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 what is clear is that Ms. Bebela is able to say, because I think she has said so, she would have shared with Ms. Sambo, and I think she may have said with other people as well, particularly uh, black-owned PPEE enterprises, uh, pricing information <coughs> that was available in the public domain, and uh, not specific pricing information, not info, info pricing information, <coughs> specific to a particular tender and and it may be because if she's able to say that maybe she takes care of that concern uh, a regrettable chair again yeah. without being argumentative yes i see things from a different perspective mm -hmm. and that perspective with all humility is this mm. in order to defend Ms. Memela's position, mm. we need to have all the guns firing. Mm. We are limited mm. if a broad statement is going to be thrown out there. Mm. Because in the same way that Ms. Hofmeyer is actually not only eliciting information but is cross-examining is cross-examining mm. as to credibility, we also need to be given an opportunity to state if the information that has been placed before this tribunal mm. is actually incorrect information, mm. or if the information that has been placed before this tribunal mm. is information that has not been properly researched. Mm. A and in order for us to do that, mm. we need to be able to attack mm. the very information, that is the actual information. Mm. If, for instance, it is figures, mm. the, the figure is 100, Mm. We need to be able to say no, that figure was not 100, mm. that figure was 50 rents. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Hofmeyer? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to uh, respond to Ms. Mbanjwe in one respect and then proceed with the questions. Chair, we began a line of questioning yesterday in relation to the flash disk. And it was in response to that that an objection was received because uh, Ms. Mbanjwa, acting for Ms. Mamela, was concerned about their inability to test and possibly dispute what our expert within the Commission had said about that flash disk. It was at that point that the line of questioning in relation to the flash disk ceased because you had given an indication that there should be a process whereby they could interrogate it. I left any further questioning in relation to the flash disk. Had I been able to persist, many of the questions that Ms. Mbanjwa wants answered today would have been answered because we have an affidavit from Mr. Robertson who explains on affidavit precisely how that spreadsheet was created. It explains precisely where the pricing information came and he explains precisely when it came, which was when the five-month tender was still open and AAR was still bidding on it. But we did not go there because there was an objection. The consequence of that is that I pick up today on the WhatsApp communications. That's a different matter. 
All that I'm asking Ms. Mamela today is for her account on the WhatsApp communications. It is in black and white on the page before me that Ms. Mamela said at a point in communications that Ms. Sambo said she received from Ms. Mamela that even before that, when you wanted price information for Cheryl, I gave that to you as I never thought it would one, you would one day plan to use it against me. Ms. Mamela's response under oath has been clear. If there was any pricing information she shared with Ms. Sambo, it related to generally available pricing information. And that's the point I'd like to pick up with her on in relation to the context in which this uh, recordal of this message appears. Yes, I see Ms. Mamela, you want to respond? What I need to put on record, Chair, is it seems as if Ms. Hofmeyer does not understand or accept the nature of evidence. Each evidence is an independent specimen before the court. The evidence of the flash disk was independent. We objected to it because of what covered it. This evidence of the WhatsApp is another separate specimen of evidence. She cannot say, because our objection to the evidence of the flesh disk was upheld, she therefore has a right oh, well, to submit well, now let's, let's just this make, evidence. Uh, let's make sure we are accurate. Uh, we didn't get to the stage of upholding or rejecting any objection, but we, I gave some indications with a view that we could have progress and uh, some understanding. Uh, even now, I have not made any ruling. I'm seeking to make sure that we can have progress. And if we can do so without having to make a ruling, that would be fine, but if I have to make a ruling, I will. So I, I'm listening to both of you and seeing whether we can make progress without having to make a ruling. But if, if, we, if we can't uh, find a way to move forward and have progress without a ruling, I will uh, have a ruling. So, so no ruling has been made, but I, I, I made some inclinations, some indications and uh, uh, to see if there could be common ground, and uh, uh, Ms. Hofmeyer was, uh, able, was able to um, handle the matter the way she, she did, and uh, uh, to accommodate your concerns. Um, if I have to make a ruling, I'll say, make your submissions, and I'll now make a ruling. So, um, right now, I think that uh, we need to find a way of uh, uh, moving forward. And uh, if we can't find a way, I'll just have to make a ruling and we, we, we move on. Uh, as I see it, um, you know, listening to your objection and listening to Ms. Hofmeyer, uh, I can understand why Ms. Hofmeyer, who knows more uh, about the evidence that she is presenting, um, because she has focused on it in preparation and knows why she's bringing a certain witness at a certain time, why she might say not proceeding and finalizing the evidence relating to, uh, I keep on calling it a, uh, <laughs> flesh disc. <laughs> flesh disc. Flesh disc. <laughs> um, uh, she, she knows what's in there, uh, and she knows what affidavits relate to, to that. I may have <laughs> my attention may have been directed to one affidavit or two. Uh, so, so it doesn't surprise me if she says, look, had I proceeded and uh, gone ahead with that line of questioning, these issues would not be arising, you see. So, so I, 
I think what I'm going to do is this. I, I do have need to take a five minutes break to attend to some something. So I'm going to take a, a, a few minutes break and give a chance to you and Ms. Hofmeyer to have a discussion on how we can achieve a smooth running of the proceedings without prejudicing your client's rights. If when I come back you have found each other and I'm happy with what you have reached, we'll, we'll proceed. If you have not found each other, I may have to make a ruling. Is that all right? Thank you, Chair. Okay, all right. Ms. Hoffmeyer, is that fine? Indeed, Chair. Thank yes. You. So, uh, it's 28 minutes past on my watch. Let's say I will return at 22.11. We are jets. All rise.
myself, may I? Chair, uh, Ms. Mbanjwa indicated to me over the break that they were happy to uh, have Ms. Mamela answer the questions. Okay. But I understand from Ms. Mbanjwa that there's something she nonetheless wants to raise with you. Okay, all right. Is it fine? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Mamela, you indicated that the only pricing information you would have given to Ms. Sambo was general publicly available information. Is that correct? Yes, Chair, that's my understanding. Uh, maybe it will be uh, prices coming from previous tenders and, 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 and stuff. Um, I have not checked uh, Leon's um, uh, affidavit uh, that Ms. Hofmeyer kept on. I have not read it. So we're just preparing other that are relevant to the re-examination. Yes. Why would pricing information from previous tenders be publicly available? I uh, remember it has already, the tender has already passed. Mm. And usually, um, and I don't know if you remember during our meeting, uh, during our meeting chair with Ms. Hofmeyer and uh, Ms. Mr. Kitland, uh, I mentioned to them that um, our papers from 2013, when I joined um, procurement, the papers was to ensure that we save as much uh, as possible for SAT. Because Air France, the previous supplier, had been charging SAT an arm and the leg since two 2008. So I remember Mr. Kitland even asking me, okay, but how was testing the market for that short period going to help? Because anyway, the tender before that had um, given prices. And I said if he, he, he would have the full information from SAT and take the tender from 2013, 2014, when it was awarded to Pegasus and it was cancelled, and the five-year tender, and the final tender, he will see how much SAT has saved since then. Uh, right now in the current contract, my understanding on the submission that was done by the same Leon Roberts that Ms. Hoffmeyer was referring to, uh, SAT, my understanding, is saving 800 million out of this current contract compared to Air France. Ms. Mamela, the pricing information of a bidder is commercially sensitive to it, is it not? Commercially sensitive how? It's confidential <coughs> to the bidder. It's their pricing. No, no, no. Uh, oh, okay. um, I see that there's another objection. Chair, if I may just make a point in advance of Ms. Mbanjwa's yes, objection. Yes, yes. Chair, we are now at quarter to 11 today. Yeah. Um, I understood from your indications yesterday mm. that there was a request that there be an ability for the evidence to flow, mm. that matters either come to me by a note, mm. if there's mm. a matter, or it be reserved for re-examination provided mm. it's, it is clarificatory. Mm. I believe it is my duty at this mm. point to indicate we will not finish this evidence mm. today mm. if these objections happen after every second or third question, and we yeah. will not finish the evidence of Mr. Nzeku tomorrow yeah. if we do not move more fluidly today. Yes. But let me hand over to my learned friend. Yes. Ms. Mbadra? It's fine, Jessica. Okay, all right. Uh, Ms. Mamela, I was saying uh, it's confidential to the bidder what their pricing was for a particular bid. Do you accept that? It's confidential like during the tender process. Something that, um, yeah, something that happened previously. Mm. It's something that, I mean, has given us an indication at supply chain that maybe at the market mm. currently, this is how much they are charging. Mm. So, which is the reason why maybe we had tested the market previously. So, it does not necessarily mean that if the beta had tender, tendered, um, a certain amount, previous tender, they will, uh, they will be this, the same amount for the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as I'm, I'm actually trying to explain this, Chairperson, I'm, I'm still not saying it was um, the whatever price. I'm saying like it, it could have been any other normal price that like we would have known from SCM. I'm saying that it can't be coming from the tender because even if like, uh, Leon would say, okay, I had said he must do a spreadsheet it would not be a spreadsheet coming from the CFST. Yes, yes. okay, mm. Ms. Mamela. Let's uh, go back to Christopher to Chris Anzazia, 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 like Anzazia. yesterday. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's just that sometimes these yeah. kind of questions, they leave um, a bitter taste in the public eye's mouth, but okay, it's yes. fine. No, I'll no, try no. and, and, yes. and be no, as, no. as no, no. crisp as possible. I understand. I'm trying to 
make sure we make progress. I, but also, I'm saying this because I know I will grant your yeah. lawyer yeah. Uh, an opportunity to re-examine, re so she can pick up some of the things where she knows you would have liked to um, put a certain perspective. Okay. Yeah, okay. Did you check with the previous bidders whether they were happy for their pricing information to go to a competitor in the market? Okay, remember, Chair, um, uh, Ms. Hofmeyer did read something on the bid uh, about the, the project manager being Leon in this regard. Uh, that he's the only one that was supposed to uh, what, inquire by information and whatever. So my understanding is that there is n there's no way that I would have forced Leon to give me information that is forbidden. No, Ms. Mamela, it's not clear whether he knew you were going to give it to another bidder. My question to you was a different one. Did you yourself, before you handed over the pricing information to Ms. Sambo, check whether the previous bid prices of the bidders, mm -hmm. they were happy to have mm -hmm. handed over to a competitor? Remember, Ms. Remember, Chair, I, 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 the memory stick that she's referring to, because I can see when she's using the hand, uh, now it's like, She's saying when you gave that information, remember the memory stick part of the information is still questionable from us. Yes, so, but yeah. the question mm. is, whenever you gave pricing information to Ms. Sambo or anybody else based on previous standards, I think as you say, mm. the question is whether you would have checked with the previous bidders to which that information related, that they had no objection to you giving this information to a potential competitor. Chair, uh, since uh, you remember, uh, Ms. Hofmeyer read that document, the tender document yesterday, that all inquiries will be done with Leon. My understanding is that if I ask for information from Leon that is something confidential for the CFST, she would have checked then with uh, the bidders. But like it shows that this one was not something that is forbidden if I were to share uh, it at all. Is, yes. is your answer that you did not? I did not, Chair. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. And then what would be the problem, Ms. Mamela, and how could that information be used against you, as is reflected in the WhatsApp communication, if it was information that could freely be shared? Okay. Um, I, you see, um, She's talking about the information that could be used against me. Um, the other information that she's not mentioning other than the price that she's focusing on, it will be the JV that we discussed yesterday and the proposal. So that's exactly what I was saying to her because remember, I had sent that to her confidentially, helping her as a black owned supplier. And like we'll, then we'll, 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 we'll show that with my lawyer during the re-examination what is my obligation towards black-owned suppliers and stuff. So, Ms. Mela, when you said, and I quote, even before that, when you wanted price okay, info... Where, where are you, Ms. Apologies. Mm -hmm. I'm at 532 in Exhibit DD18. It's the same sentence that I've read uh, previously. It's about uh, midway down that last okay. communication on the page. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be clear on your evidence. When you wrote to Ms. Sambo, and I quote, even before that, when you wanted price information for Cheryl, mm -hmm. I gave that to you as I never thought you would one day plan to use it against me. You were actually not referring to the pricing information. You were referring to the proposal and the JV agreement. Is that your evidence? Okay, no, uh, this is, has something to do with the price chair. As I said, like I have not read this WhatsApp. So I'm saying some of this WhatsApp, uh, it's very long. Uh, I have not read it this morning, but my understanding is that it was on JV proposal and whatever price that Spongley claims I have given to her. And um, Ms. Uh, Hofmeyer's next question was, uh, before we took a break, was why would Spongley or Sambo turn against me. I don't know if she's still gonna come to that question. No, I would like what, to what I'm focusing that. on is mm. this very sentence. Okay. You've explained in your evidence that you did give pricing information, but it was pricing information that you could freely share with Ms. Sambo because it related to historic tenders. And I'm asking you if that's the pricing information that you're referring to in this sentence, how could that possibly be used against you if it is information that can freely be given? Um, 
Chairperson, I'm sitting here today. I'm answering a question regarding the same information. So that's exactly what is being used against me. Against me, well, and at person, that time you didn't know you would sit here today. No, remember, she, mm. she, she, there's some way where I have mentioned city press and stuff. So I'm talking about information that a person is using because it, talking city press or maybe whatever. So going to the media about those kind of things and stuff, and you know the media with no uh, full background information and when they write about somebody. So like it was that used against me, not uh, because it's illegal or anything like that, uh, as I understand Ms. Hoffmeyer's question. Um, Ms. Mamela, to conclude on this point, I, I want to give you an opportunity to comment on the following observation. Uh, it will be our likely submission in due course that this information was not freely available, and it was given, and that is why you were concerned that it would be used against you in future. If it was to be freely given, there would be no worry about Ms. Sambo going to City Press, and there would be no reason for you to say it could be used against you. Do you have a response to that? I have a response to that, Chairperson. And I will refer to the JV information that you asked me about, that why would a supplier talk to me about JV. Uh, I will refer to the proposal as well. As I said yesterday, that when suppliers come to me, it's all about supplier development. And as much as then um, uh, Air France uh, BEE would have came to me for information, JM would have came to me, Sibongile herself, or any other supplier, when I give them information, it's not something that I expect that in the future, like it has done now, uh, it will be used as evidence against me. So that's, that's the, the point that I was trying to make there. And this JV is here, but like at least we'll be able to clarify uh, during the re-examination in terms of the JV, what was my uh, obligation in terms of helping suppliers and all that. So that's where I think my point was being made on that WhatsApp. It's a pity that, Chair, I mean, when you discuss certain things with a person, uh, the last thing that you, you think uh, the person is doing is to keep certain information uh, that was discussed long time ago because that now we don't really recollect exactly what was said at that time and from what context. And, and, and I did mention uh, on Friday earlier that um, the, the supply development issue was a sensitive issue as such. Um, uh, unfortunately, I was looking for an email that I wanted to read for the chair to see exactly what I had to go through to try and prove, to push uh, the supplier development. Some of my team, um, during like, this whole process, were really against it. They will agree in my face, and then behind my face, they do something else and not empower uh, the same people. And as I said, that BEE was called Nonsasa's BEE and stuff. So like, it was my way of trying to say, okay, I will help the people in terms of I mean, making sure that they understand exactly what is expected of them and stuff. Not, not to say I was taking something so confidential that uh, is illegal, you know. So I will explain that during my re-examination chair in, in detail. Well, you have said quite a few times mm -hmm. uh, something that gives me the impression that you are saying that uh, it was part of your job to share information with um, uh, suppliers. Uh, yeah, black, uh, sup suppl sup suppliers in order to assist them. Yes, sir. Now, uh, it, it may be that uh, we should deal with that now rather than in re-examination. Is that your evidence that that was part of your job? That was part of my job. So we'll read that from the SCM and the enterprise uh, yes. policy. Yes. Okay. I, I would like us to go there if there is something written down that says that was part of your job, so that uh, before uh, your lawyer re-examines, uh, we have had a chance to understand uh, the source of or the basis of that evidence. Ms. Bajra. Uh, thank you, Chair. I have actually prepared something very specific. So I do not know if the Chair wants us to present it now, we can present it because we have documentation 
and we have proof of what we are saying. So we are actually using documents from SATS. We just thought that it would be proper that we do it as part of our re-examination. Yeah, no, no, it's better that uh, when Ms. Hofmeyer finishes, she has been able to canvas everything and all that remains is clarificatory questions uh, from your side. Uh, maybe what we should do uh, is that uh, uh, share with Ms. Hofmeyer during the tea break what you have and whatever other documents you may have been intending to hand up so that uh, <coughs> she can see whether uh, they could assist uh, in uh, understanding certain things and then putting certain questions to her and then so that when she sits down uh, the re-examination is really aimed at clarification and not at raising new things because that's not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> yes, your chairperson, but can we please, with all due respect, reserve our rights? I'm going to be upfront. Ms. Hofmeyer's attitude is very confrontational. I'm not complaining. She has chosen to follow the path. Can we please reserve our own re-examination? She has decided to do things, to conduct things in this way. When she gave me the file the other time, she threw it at me. Mm. I am fine with this uh, chairperson. I, I, I will continue like this. The, the hostility is fine. It is welcome. Let us proceed like this, Chairperson. We are just grateful about the fact that you are really considerate in these proceedings. You noted immediately that client is not really well today. She is indeed not well, but she is able to continue. We do not want to delay the proceedings, but I prefer to play my cards very close to my chest. I want prejudice because the documents which we are going to use are the documents which come from the files that are with them. The only thing that we have done is to extract them and to put the proper interpretation. There will be no surprises. Oh, oh okay, okay. Well, uh, I would just <laughs> encourage, of course, I haven't heard what Ms. Sofmeyer has to say, and she might choose not to say anything. Uh, I would just encourage that, uh, I would encourage uh, collegiality, and I would encourage that we all try and work well together. And, uh, uh, try and may ensure a smooth running of the proceedings. Uh, I'm sure that things uh, can be sorted out. Uh, um, so if the documents you are talking about are documents that come from the bundles that uh, Ms. Hofmeyer has, then it shouldn't be a problem. But it would help if her attention and my attention is drawn to specific documents that might deal with this area because, uh, as I say, the, the examination or re-examination is supposed to be just to clarify uh, issues that might not have been clarified. So, but um, we, we will see, I mentioned that, I'm not forcing you to do anything that you might not want to do now, but, uh, uh, as long as you bear that in mind. I've borne it in mind, your worship. That, yes. We will be very, very, very brief. Okay, all right, thank you. Ms. Hofmeyer. Chair, I don't think it's fruitful for me to uh, engage in the allegation of hostility. Uh, it's my submission that that is false, that I have a job to do here in mm -hmm. this commission, and I've been doing it. Uh, and as far as collegiality goes, Ms. Mbanjwa and Ms. Mamela know the steps that I've gone to to ensure that they can consult freely and not in a situation where there's any chance that we would overhear them. There's an issue with the rooms next door to us and there's actually an ability to hear between the rooms. I took steps to go to them and indicate that they must be aware of the fact that there is a, a transmission of sound between them because I wanted to be absolutely sure that they could consult freely. So um, I'd like to move on then, if we may. Yes, okay. Let's uh, then go, um, Ms. Mamela, to a point that you referenced, I think it was yesterday or Friday. Mm -hmm. um, it's a part of your statement where you raise um, 
Mr. Bezaidenhout's previous involvement in speaking to uh, a bidder, and you said you were hoping that we'd get to that, and so I'd like to take you to it. It's at page 10 of your statement, and that is in DD 25A, and you'll find it at page 10. That doesn't mean we are done with the WhatsApp messages, or does it? No, it does mean that we're done. Okay. Indeed. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chair. Oh, are we done? Yes. So oh, we, we are not done with the WhatsApp messages. Uh, she, she'll still continue. <laughs> no, no, sorry. I'm indicating we are done with the WhatsApp messages. Oh, you say you... We've concluded. I've put to oh. Ms. Mamela what uh, wanted her response on. And now we're moving to uh, an aspect in relation to the interactions between tenderers and um, the uh, SART. Yes, okay. <clears throat> no, I... Which page, Jen? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, can I take you back to the uh, oh. WhatsApp messages? What was the page? Uh, it was 532 of Exhibit DT18. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. I haven't refreshed my memory on this WhatsApp message, but last week I had looked at it uh, uh, properly. Uh, I understood that one of the things you said, uh, or the, mess the WhatsApp message reflects, is that... Uh, Acknowledged having given uh, Miss Sambo some information to give to Miss Jackson, Cheryl Jackson. Is, 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 is that uh, your recollection of one of the things reflected in the, in the, SMA, in the WhatsApp message? Chad said uh, my response was if I had given her any information with regard to pricing, yes. it would be just the standard pricing that we know from supply chain. Yes. And from, it would be maybe from the previous tenders and, 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 and whatever. Yes. So I said, if I had given. Yes, yes. If, if you had given. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, yes. yeah, it was more helping her more than anything. And yes. we will go in detail, not, not long though, in terms of her looking for prices yes. versus her coming back to Ernest and Young and saying she did not bid with AR. Yes. Yeah, so that's my point that I will make later on. Yes. Mm. In any event, I think she did testify that uh, you gave her information that was uh, relevant to the tender that uh, AAR uh, uh, wanted to bid for, that she was going to give to Miss Cheryl Jackson. Mm. Uh, what do you say to her evidence in that regard? Chair, that could not be accurate because uh, I don't sit at CFST. As I said, that if Leon had done a spreadsheet, he had done a spreadsheet not out of the CFST. Remember, CFST works together. Whatever the information they do, they do together. So I'm not sure in his affidavit if, uh, we, if he had stated that he had taken the information from the CFST, from what I read, like when I was browsing through his affidavit, he had said I had asked her to um, compile a, a spreadsheet about a certain um, information, and then he went as far as the historical prices. I, I, I think E.G. Lufthansa. He gave an example of Lufthansa. So I, 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 I don't agree that I gave Ms. Sambo what was on that tender for 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 the five months contract. Um, she said you gave her this uh, uh, information when she had a, she met with you at uh, a shell garage in Alberton. 
Uh, do you remember any meeting that you may have had with her at Shell Garage in Alberton? Chair, I wouldn't remember. That's why I said, you see, some of this information is coming from 2017. And yeah, so I said to my statement, I don't remember meeting Ms. Sambo at the Shell Garage. Most of our meetings were at, at SAT. She will just pop up and come to my office, ask for certain things and stuff. So I don't remember the Shell Garage part. So I, I, as much I, as I don't remember me giving her the memory stick. I take, I take your evidence to be that <coughs> you are not necessarily denying that you had a meeting at some stage with her at Shell Garage, but you say you, you can't remember. No, I don't remember, Chair. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. She also told me about a meeting that she said she had with you at uh, a restaurant, was it Mimos? Or? I don't at, uh, when, when you broke Max. the Max. news to her that the tender had been given to... Um, AAR. AAR. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said she, she cried uh, and uh, you were quite surprised at her reaction. Uh, do you remember that uh, meeting with her at... At, at a restaurant in Alberton again. I do remember that meeting. You do, you do remember that one? I remember that meeting. I'm yes. not sure about her saying I, I was quite surprised. Yes. I'm not sure if maybe she's trying to paint a picture that maybe I was not uh, feeling sorry for her or anything like that. Well, um, on the um, contrary, my, my understanding of that part of evidence uh, is that she was conveying that you, 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 you may have felt that uh, you, <coughs> that this was bad and that, uh, you know, you didn't expect her to, 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 to be hurt like that by that <coughs> decision. But uh, I, I didn't get the impression that she was saying you were doing anything in that meeting at the <laughs> restaurant to hurt her as such. Okay, Chair, mm. yeah, in her statement, what, my understanding of what she was saying, she said, I wanted, maybe, I wanted uh, to be the first one to tell her the information. Uh, since like, I knew that um, how she felt about AR and whatever. And I'm saying that's, that can't be correct because I remember very well when we made a recommendation, it went to the board, and then I don't know how long the board took, and then before we knew, we were getting calls, I can't mention name here, uh, because I have not mentioned the names from, but we were getting calls from uh, uh, high top people asking why um, did the board give the tender to AR, and we were explaining that we have from supply chain submitted for Air France, and we have not even received the board resolution yet. Asin is not back yet from the meeting. In fact, everybody was already going up and down discussing this thing, and I don't know how it went out of the board meeting, but it was already discussed, and then before we knew it, it was on the news, and then AF France was taking SAT to court. So I'm saying it's, it can't be true that I, I went to meet her there because uh, I wanted me to be the first person to tell her. I could have went there to, to, to tell her because I could tell that she was not okay. And the reason why I have uh, sent, a show, like I mean, shared some of the JV information and I was preparing her if she could um, meet up with other multinational suppliers and stuff. And it does also show in this WhatsApp that I have advised her from the beginning that you cannot have any claim from somebody if you do not have a contract. And I even offered if I could draft it for free. Because, I mean, um, I, I thought maybe she was worried about the legal fees and stuff. And I said, I can draft it for free because I want to make sure that like you have an exclusive agreement from these people. So me sharing the JV with her was actually trying to highlight to her that this is how you enter into a JV agreement with multinational suppliers to ensure that your rights are protected and stuff. So um, going there and then, yes, she cried. I remember that. And um, there was nothing I could do. And I had to explain to her that, I remember as much as maybe um, 
I cared for you and you have, we've been working so hard on this component tender from 2012 and I was hoping that one day maybe you'll get a supplier that you will work with successfully. Uh, I did say, Chair, we will, we, we, you promised that you'll give me some time <coughs> at the end uh, of the, but I wanted to say uh, the only other problem I've mentioned also in my statement is that Ms. Sambo had a severely uh, sense of entitlement. I don't know how many suppliers I have introduced to her. Uh, there's one DDN Aerospace where the lady from Dubai was sup supplying parts to SAT uh, every day and then Ms. Sambo will sit and do nothing but when the invoice is sent to SAT to pay she will go and say okay but you're using my name and stuff so, so that's when I had oh. I thought I had an obligation to explain to her that Supplier development is not about a black face. You don't okay. just sit and do nothing. Okay, I will explain that yes, later, yes, Chair, but yes, yes, I just you will. got credit. Okay, <coughs> let's, uh, so the meeting at the restaurant, you, you, you remember? It did take place, The I one at the Shell Garage, you don't remember? I don't you remember that one. You are not saying it one. did not happen, you just say you don't remember? I don't remember it, Yes. Yeah. Um, now, please explain to me how giving her information about pricing from previous tenders to give to Miss Jackson, if you did give, because I think you said if you did give, how that would have uh, helped uh, them? Why would that information be relevant? Okay. Um, in, in, your, in your view? I think in my view then, if I had shared such information with Spongile, um, one thing I had noticed from her is that she did not have much knowledge about MRO. And she did not have much knowledge about the kind of part, uh, parts or, or part numbers or whatever the co kind of components that SAT requires. So those are the kind of information that I remember AAR when it was still tendering with her from 2012, they kept on getting disqualified. Uh, because they were short on certain part numbers when they, they were when they were bidding, so I think it will be maybe something like that where I would notice that okay maybe we should do something like this next next time. Remember, sometimes you, um, as the head of supply chain or maybe CPO, you can give a person a feedback. With the reason why you did not succeed on the previous tender was because of these gaps. And stuff. So I, my understanding is that it would have been maybe the information around that. But do you accept that uh, uh, she could have used such information uh, to the prejudice of any previous bidder uh, if there was um, a tender, a similar tender in the future? No, Chair, it wouldn't be to the prejudice mm. to other previous bidder. Remember, uh, the information for the, for with the previous bidders was working for that previous tender. The yes, current but, tender uh, will be something else uh, because uh, CFS or C CFST, when they go out and keep on going back to the bidder saying, okay, maybe uh, you must sharpen up your pencil, uh, do this now. So it has nothing to do with their previous but bid. But if there is a, 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 a similar tender in the future, um, then if I have an idea what that competitor's pricing was a year or two ago, I could uh, be able to have a good indication what their likely pricing is a year later, isn't it? Not really, Shay. That's not how it works. Why not? Um, remember, as I said, that this tender started in 2013. And if we can get, if we had the time for this commission, so that everybody out there understands, uh, if we had the file for 2013 versus 2014, 2015, and the last one, 2016, we'll see like how much difference, like in terms of the the the, the prices. Uh, it, it does not mean like that. Okay, because that one be dead. For instance, I'll make an example with AJ Walters, uh, uh, with their BE supplier Pegasus. Uh, in 2014, they bid it extremely low, mm. extremely low, mm. and uh, through Pegasus, and then we had a problem that, okay, because Pegasus was going to subcontract to AJ Walters, 
and then out of the blue, then remember the PPPFA does not actually even allow that 25%, more than 25% uh, subcontracting. That's the reason that they couldn't get. That was 2014. If you can check the submission of AJ Walters in 2016, the final tender, um, the reason why they were disqualified, they kept on going up instead. So that's why I'm trying to say that it does not mean that like when it comes like it's, it's coming from the previous tender, then when we run another tender, the supplier automatically goes lower than the, the previous one. And remember that previous one, the five-year period tender versus the five-month five period tender versus the five-year period tender, there, those are two different periods. You know, that's the reason why we actually even ended up giving to Air France, which was the current uh, supplier at that time. Ms. Hoffman. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, I'm indebted for those follow-up questions. Uh, with your leave, I, I do propose to move to the next topic. That's fine, yes. Thank you. Um, Ms. Mamela, that was going to be in your bundle, 25A, DD 25A, and to pick it up at page 10. Uh, I see we had got a pass, but ah, I'm quite apologies. happy to take the tea break at half past unless mm. uh, the witness or somebody pleads that we take the, <laughs> the break now. Is it uh, DD? Uh, uh, sorry, okay. DD 25A, okay, we'll, but we're proposing we'll 15 more minutes and yeah, then we'll, we'll take, break. Yeah, we'll take the tea break at half past. Okay. Chair. Yeah, okay. Thank yeah. you, Chair. And the page? Uh, page 10. bundle are we going to? Uh, DD 25A, Chair. The one that has got Ms. Mamela's statement. Indeed, and we're going okay. to be in her statement at page 10. Okay. Ms. Mamela, there's a paragraph just before the heading on that page, uh, which reads discussions with AAR. Do you see that? I see that. And in that paragraph, you talk about um, the rule of a tender that does not allow bidders to meet with anyone who is a decision maker from the company while the tender is still running. Do you see that? Yeah. And I understand you in this paragraph to be saying that there had been previous meetings between uh, Mr. Bezadenhout and Mr. Parsons that you regarded as in conflict with that rule. Is that correct? Okay. Can we read until the end? So yes, certainly. Why don't you do so? Okay. Uh, I said at the end there, but Air France was not disqualified because Mr. Bezadenhout and Mr. Parsons were not part of the evaluation no adjudication team. Thank you. Uh, no, that I does clarify. I don't, I, don't, I don't know where you read about the conflict. No, apologies. Oh. That is my error. I, had, uh, I was confusing evidence you gave previously where you said you wanted to go to the uh, Mr. Bezaid and Hote issue, and I'd understood from your testimony mm. that you were concerned that he had breached the rule of the tender, but you've clarified for me now. You weren't saying he breached it, but can I just clarify, do you regard it as a rule of tender procurement? that you can't meet with a bidder if you are part of the decision-making body in relation to that tender while it's still open? Chair, my understanding of that question, you correct me if I'm, I didn't understand it well. It says, she says, if you are part of the decision-making body. Yes, let me uh, uh, put the question this way. Yeah. Is it your understanding that if somebody is part of the decision-making process in regard to a tender, mm -hmm. that person may not meet with somebody who is uh, bidding for the tender uh, before decisions have been made. Sure. We do not have a, a specific provision from the supply chain that talks to that. Uh, Ms. Hofmeyer read from the bid the tender documentation when she was talking about who is uh, prohibited to meet. Yes, but hang yes. on, hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. She's not asking what the tender document says. She's asking whether it is your understanding that it is not allowed 
for somebody who is involved in decision making in regard to a tender to meet with a bidder before the tender is finalized. She's asking your understanding. Okay. My understanding on the tenders is based on the delegation of authority. Remember I said these tenders were within the delegation of authority of the board. And the board is the decision maker, final decision maker when it comes to the, board, the tenders. So to, for me to say, uh, I think it is wrong for decision makers to meet suppliers or maybe potential suppliers, uh, I would be wrong because we all know all over South Africa, not just SAA or SAAT, incorporate uh, state-owned companies. Board members meet with the suppliers and discuss with them. So I, I, I would be wrong to say, okay, they are not allowed because that would be coming from me. Mm. I'm not sure which uh, provision of the legislation that would be prohibiting them from doing that. Maybe I don't understand the question. No, no, no. I think you do understand the question, okay. Ms. Hoffman. Thank you, Chair. It's just your own statement, Ms. Mamela. That's what I'm working from. So your statement at page 10 mm. says, the last paragraph before the heading, this is also the time when Air France went and met with the then acting CEO, Mr. Nico Bezadenhout and Mr. Barry Parsons. And this is the part I'd like to emphasize. Against the rule of the tender that does not allow bidders to meet with anyone whom is a decision maker from the company whilst the tender is still running. I'm taking it from your own statement. Is that consistent with your understanding that it is a rule of tender procurement no. that the members of the decision maker cannot Chair, meet with a bidder while the tender is still open? Chair, uh, I would say then she's using a, a wrong reference in, in trying to raise her point. Mr. Bezadenhout and uh, Mr. Parsons did not sit in the board of SAT that took the final decision of the tenders. So they were not the decision makers of SAT. Well, let's start, let's start by what your statement that she refers to means. Mm. Uh, because that, that she's basing her questions on what the statement says. You say in that paragraph, this is also the time when, when Air France went and met the then acting CEO, Mr. Nico Pesajinhout. Mm. So now we know Air France and Mr. Pesajinhout met and Mr. Barry Parsons, mm -hmm. so it was the two of them, and you say against the rule of the tender that does not allow bidders to meet with anyone who is a decision maker from the company whilst the tender is still running. I understand that sentence to say there is a rule relating to tenders that prohibits meetings between bidders and anyone from the company who is a decision maker while the tender is running. Is and my so understanding of what you are saying here uh, correct? So the, the tender rule, uh, I, may, I may have been referring to the uh, provision that Ms. Hofmeyer was referring to yesterday. And remember I did say that um, we never got that documentation. And yes, so, but, but like hang I, on. I, I, yeah. Hang on, let's go back to our crisp answers like yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so my question is, I've told you what my understanding is of what you are saying here. Mm. My question is whether my understanding is not correct. I, okay. I, I, I repeat it. I understand you to be saying in this statement, mm. it is a, there is a rule relating to tenders that prohibits a meeting between a bidder and a decision maker in relation to that tender from the company mm. whilst the tender is running. Is my understanding of what you are saying there correct? Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe so, that is your understanding of what I was saying. But now the sentence yeah, okay, continues. Okay, no, no, I didn't hear what you, you said. Just repeat. I'm saying that's your understanding of what I was saying. Yes, no. Yes. Yeah, but and is 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 it is it a correct understanding of what, what it is as far as you are concerned? <laughs> Not per se, Chair, because like, there was a continuation in terms of the 
the paragraph where yeah, it does just, say. Just, just yes. tell me what you say you, you understand the statements you say to, to me. Okay, I said this is also the time when Air France went and met the then acting CEO, Mr. Bezit Inwood and Mr. Barry Parsons, against the rule of the tender that does not allow the bidders to meet with anyone. And I said in bracket, whom is a decision maker from the company whilst the tender is still running? Yes. And then that, I, I, I yeah, added. And what's your understanding of what that means? Is it, is it different from my understanding that there is a rule? Yes, uh, the, the, it, it does not necessarily mean when I put the decision makers with, uh, like within the brackets, I was saying they were the decision makers offside. But remember, they could influence the, yes. the decision because of the role they hold. No, no, leave out as to whether Mr. President Hood and Mr. Parsons were decision makers. Mm -hmm. Let's just take what the rule means that you are referring to. I'm saying I understand you to be saying there is a rule relating to tenders that there should be no meeting between a bidder and somebody within the company who will be involved in decision making in relation to a, a particular tender to meet. Do you understand it differently? Just where, what that rule is that you are referring to? The so I, I think then maybe how my statement is written, because when I add that, but Air France was not disqualified, mm -hmm. because these two guys that I've mentioned here do not sit in the evaluation committee and the bid evaluation committee. No, no, I accept that. Remember that what I'm still trying to establish now is, is there a rule? Oh. And if there is, what does it say? That is... I, we, without applying it to Mr. Pesaj, you know, oh, okay. Mr. Pesaj, just oh. what the rule is that you are referring to. They, so that, that, that is, it's at the general level that I'm talking. There is no rule, Chair, that uh, I know of. Yeah. As I said, that most of these uh, uh, decision makers, like, according to their delegation of authority, mm. they would meet with potential suppliers, mm. suppliers and, and discuss certain information. But, but remember that the fact that they meet mm doesn't necessarily mean, shouldn't necessarily mean there was no rule because they could be meeting suppliers in breach of the rule. So, 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 so are you saying that in this, this statement should not be taken to say you are saying there is a rule? Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I'm this person chair who, ref, when I refer to something, when I agree to say, okay, that is the rule, I should be able to pick it up and say, okay, this is the rule, this is the par paragraph that says that. So yeah. that's why I'm saying like, I don't remember of any rule that, um, um, mm -hmm. other than that rule in the tender document that was re read by Ms. Hofmeyer yesterday. Okay, Ms. Hofmeyer. Uh, it was Mr. Human's evidence. Uh, he now is in an acting position, in the position that you previously occupied as the head of uh, I'm, supply. I'm sorry, Ms. Hofmeyer, to do this to you. No, no. Uh, Ms. Memela, I just want to close off our discussion a few minutes ago. I, I, I understood your evidence, maybe on Friday or maybe yesterday, to also be to the effect that the reason why there was nothing wrong with you communicating with JM Aviation and so on mm. was because you were not going to be involved in any decision making. I was not going to, I was not involved in the CFST. Yes, but, yeah, but evaluation um, committee. That, that's my recollection of your evidence that yeah. you, you sought to, part of the reason you used to justify the fact that you were communicating with them Chair, was that yeah. uh, you were not going to be involved in decision making and therefore if you are not involved in decision making, there is no problem. Is my recollection of your evidence wrong? Yes, that, that's, that's a correct recollection, Chair, but like yes. it was in addition yeah. to say okay. I don't see it. Yes. Okay. Mm. Now the reason and, why I'm referring to it is because, yeah. it, because it seems to be consistent with this statement that we have just been discussing. Okay. Um, Chair, so, remember there mm. was even a part where Ms. Hofmeyer asked 
uh, if when I sign, or maybe when, when I signed the recommendation to the board, was I signing as the ex co member? And I explained that no, I was signing as HOD SCM, supporting the CFST. Because like, she was getting to a point where she wanted to find out who makes the decision. You even asked me, Chair, uh, that. Um, so is it just how, a recommendation? I said, why was BAC called adjudicating committee if it was not yes, adjudicating? It, yeah. it does not take a decision, exactly. And I said, because of the delegation of authority, uh, the final decision maker falls within the tender, the, sorry, the board um, uh, of, of such, because it was, a, it, was a, it was within their delegation of authority. But the point, um, the reason why I'm referring you to your evidence, as I do, is that I'm saying, if that is what you said to justify your interactions, engagements with JM, mm -hmm. it's consistent with what I understand you to be saying in this sentence. Namely, I'm not breaking any rule by getting involved with JM and uh, discussing with them, because I'm not involved in decision making by implication, if I was involved in decision making, I would be breaking a rule yes. if I engaged with JM. Yes, sir, that's what I just said, that it was in addition also, like I added that, yes. that also I did not take a decision to this tender to award to them. Yes. On, 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 on addition to uh, the, the cross of functional evaluation. Yes, but what, what, what it leads to, and I just wanted to comment on that, what it leads to is that if that was your evidence, then it's contradictory for you if you now say there is no such rule. Because you, 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 you have now said, and you must tell me if I've misunderstood you, you have now said, no, 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 there is no such rule. No. Okay, have I misunderstood you? Yeah, I'm, I'm really confused, Chair. Now. Okay, maybe um, it's, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm really confused because uh, I think the way it's uh, interpreted how I had responded yes. to say I did not see any conflict of interest yes. because I don't sit in the bid evaluation committee. Yes, And yes. I even said, and, and, and also in addition to that, I did yes. not take a decision or make a decision or yes. even recommend for them to be awarded a tender. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, now it's the... the what confuses me is the rule versus what I had said. Yeah. Mm. You, you, you see, at a certain level, um, it, it, it looks strange to me that you would be engaged with JM the way you were engaged. At a certain level, when you say, as long as I was not involved in decision making, I was not breaking any rule. Uh, there is something to be looked at there because it may be that it, it makes sense that as long as you are not going to be involved in any decision making, what's the problem? But there is still something about that engagement that I think needs clarification. Yes. Uh, but now, <clears throat> with special reference to this, I'm simply saying, I would have expected you, in relation to this statement in uh, that paragraph at page 10 of your statement, I would have expected you to say, yes, there was a rule, or I believed that there was a rule. Uh, whether it was a rule that is written down or just a rule that is understood by everybody even though not written down, that if you are involved in decision making you can't be having meetings with one, with, with one or more of the bidders. Um, that, that for me would be consistent with what you said when you said there's nothing wrong with me engaging with JM because I'm not involved in decision making. Okay. So I'm, I'm making this so that you get a chance to comment and if there is something I'm missing, you get a chance to say, here is something that may be confusing you, Chair. 
Okay, Chair. Um, now let me try and go because I'm trying to remember back at the time. Um, Ms. Nishalalu, who was reporting to me at the time, uh, I was driving to Eastern Cape and she wrote me a long email saying she's coming from a meeting between uh, Mr. President Holt and Mr. Parpasin and there were, it was a France that was actually presenting what was uh, the, they had bidded in that bid that year. So uh, her understanding at that time when she came to me was that there is this role, and I remember she actually printed the like that just part of that legislation, which, if I remember, it was Regulation 16A of the National Treasury regulations. And after uh, I said, remember yesterday, I said I engaged legal from SAA, I engaged uh, Dr. Dawas, who was the CPO of SAA, and upon talking and sitting down and then also like when I had already um, returned to Air France asking them if I sh why should I not disqualify them. We realized that um, I think upon reading the proper applicability of um, uh, Regulation 16A that we find out that it did not apply to Schlegel 2 company. So that would have been the rule that they like, uh, thought they were acting, acted against at that time. So that's why I'm saying like there is no rule at start, but at that time when she, had, she came to complain to me, and then we took steps and sat on the meeting and, and discussed how we're going to handle this, uh, it was 16A, and we realized that 16A does not apply to uh, Schegel 2 companies. So the reason why I did not put that here is because like we had since realized that uh, we had applied the wrong rule. Okay, so that's why you see the um, edging that uh, we couldn't disqualify them because the the reason that would uh, the bid that would be disqualified will be then if uh, uh, Mr. Persons and Mr. President Wood will sit in the bid evaluation committee. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think we should take the tea, Chairman. Indeed, Chair. Um, we are at uh, 28, 27 minutes to. Uh, Shall we resume at 5 to 12? Certainly. Thank you, Chair. Yes. We, we'll, we'll adjourn and we'll resume at 5 to 12. Adjourn. All rise.
Oh, okay. let's put on the mic. Yes. Yes, I just yes. want to apologize. It's not that we were late. Umis Memela is really not feeling well, but she yes. wants to continue. One of the legal team, the investigator, has asked, has, has said he will bring a grandpa. Yes. So I was just checking up on yes. him. It's not that we want to. Okay. No, that's Apologies. fine. That's fine. Miss Memelo. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm happy that you are able to continue. I'm able to continue, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chair. And then put on your mic. It's on, sir. Okay. Oh. I think the bottle it was <laughs> obscuring it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, Ms. Mamela, I'd like to pick it up um, at the second of the five year components tenders. You'll recall that that tender was issued in October of 2014. Does that accord with your memory? Uh, can I ask Ms. Hofmeyer to repeat the question, please? Sure. So uh, there were a series of these tenders over time, right? The second one, uh, just for the record, that was SP437 of 14. Uh, that is one that uh, came second, and it was a five-year tender, and it was issued in, on the 29th of October 2014. Do you agree with that? Where are you reading, Ms. Hoffmeyer? No, it's my note. Okay. Uh, uh, Chair, I cannot agree on, on something I don't have. Yes, no, uh, she, yeah, was but, ask, she was asking yeah. whether what she's saying accords with your recollection. And if you don't recall, you can say you don't recall. Okay, Chair, because you, like, there were yes. lots of, 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 of tenders. Oh, if there's and, something and, and, you want to look at that would help you remember, that's fine. And uh, I, would, I would request Ms. Hofmeyer to go back to my statement because there was somewhere where, where I had, dealt um, with that. Yes, where I had given them the history of the component tenders mm. from 2013 up to, so maybe, so that like when she quotes a certain tender, I'm able to, we are in the same page. Yes, indeed. Let me take you there. I, I hadn't anticipated uh, that it would be um, contentious. So let me just take you there. It's in DD 25A. And you'll find it at page eight at the bottom. All right. I got it, Chair. Uh, in your own statement, you said that the second tender, which was SP437 uh, slash 14, was issued on the 29th of October 2014. Do you see that? All right at yes, the bottom, sir. yeah. So we're on the same page. It was issued we're on the, the 29th. We're on the same page, yes. Correct. And then by the middle of 2015, uh, that tender was still open, correct? Hmm? In the sense it hadn't been decided yet. In the middle of 2015, uh, it looks like, Chair, uh, we're in the same page, but it says yes. date um, retracted. It looks like it was retracted 22 of June 2015. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, so let yes. me be much more specific. In May of 2015, the tender was still open. Uh, Ms. Hoffman, when you say it was still open, are you disregarding the retractions or are you saying there had been no retraction? In <laughs> no, the not at that point yet, because oh, as Ms. Okay. Mamela has correctly pointed out at page mm. 9, mm. her records record that it was retracted on 22 June 2015. Yes. So, uh, just to get the chronology right, it's issued on the 29th of October 2014. As Ms. Mamela correctly states at page 9, it was retracted on 22 June 2015. So, my follow-up question was, as a consequence of that, in May 2015, yeah. it was still open. Okay. Correct, Ms. Okay. Mamela? Oh, 2015, yes, it was still uh, open, according mm. to the... Mm. According to your statement? Yeah, according yes. to the, the history, yeah. Yes. Um, and it was during May 2015 that you and three members of the SART board travelled to AAR in the United States, is that correct? That's correct. So that was at a time when the tender was still open and AAR had bid in that tender, correct? AAR had bid in this tender, yes. And amongst the people accompanying you were members of the SART board, is that correct? Yes, there were members of the SAT board. 
They were, I think we had from evidence previously, they were Ms. Quinana, Mr. Zwani, and uh, Dr. Tambi. Is that correct? Yeah, Mr. Zwani is the, was the CEO of SAID. Right, so an executive <coughs> member of the board, and uh, Ms. Quinana and Dr. Tambi were non-executive members of the board. Is yes. that correct? Yes, Chair. Now, that was at a time when the tender was still open, and what I'm interested in is whether you conveyed to them prior to that trip that they should not be uh, meeting with AAR because of the previous point that we debated before the break, which is that people in a decision-making role in relation to tenders should not be having meetings with bidders while the tender is still open. Uh, I'm not the advisor of the board, right? And I will give you an example of why I say this. It's because um, the decision to go to AR uh, was actually taken from, I think, SAA board, and then because it was a matter of technical, it was moved to uh, SAAT board. And they had decided from there that the reason why uh, they're going to AR is to view their facilities. And um, before they can actually try and discuss anything with regard to the partnership framework, that was uh, in place at SAD at that time. There was a partnership framework chair that uh, had been uh, talked about at SAD as far back as 2012, uh, during the board changes and stuff like that. I mean, because in the 2012, there was a different board from the, one, the 2015 one. Uh, yeah, so um, they were going to discuss that. And I did say uh, during the, or my, in my statement also, or during the, our meeting with Ms. Hofmeyer and uh, the uh, investigative team that I was only informed on the day uh, we were going to uh, Chicago that uh, we will be going on a trip. And the reason why they actually came with me was to ensure that I, I don't allow maybe AR or any other party to talk to them about anything that have to do with the tender. Just repeat that last statement. Okay, so um, the, 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 their reasoning to... For, for including you. For including me in the trip, because I was not included in the trip all this time, and um, was that because from a procurement point of view, uh, I would advise them during meetings when they go through the facilities or should AR maybe try and talk about something that uh, um, is related to component instead of talking about... Uh, the MOU or maybe partnership framework that they were going there for. So like the trip was more on the partnership framework that has been long going at SAA and it, it, it even had a document that was put down. I even mentioned and actually um, forwarded the commission's team uh, the MOU between Air France and SAT and an MOU between IAI, Israel Aerospace, and, and SAT to, to, uh, to prove that the MOU between AR and SAT was not the first MOU that was put in place. And I know that if maybe the former uh, CEO or maybe the former board members are called in, they're going to confirm this, that uh, there were other MOUs with Rolls Royce as well, and suppose, although I was not part of that. Yeah, so okay. yes, um, we, yeah. Okay. So um, you, I understand your evidence to be that you didn't at any point advise them that that trip would be against the rule of the tender that does not allow bidders to meet anyone who is a decision maker from the company while the tender is still running. You didn't give that advice to the board members. I did not give that advice to the board members. Thank you. Um, do you now regard it as wrong for them to have attended? Uh, hang on, Ms. Ms. Mbandra has something. Ms. Mbandra. Uh, Chair, the reason why I'm objecting to this question uh, is because... Uh, don't start speaking while you are far from the mic, <laughs> otherwise... With this pressure of time, Chair, yeah. thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, Chair, the reason why I am objecting to this question is because one of those questions where Chair was at pains to explain, to, to, to get clarification from Ms. Memela. And if we can turn to that page 010, 
I'm not saying that matter has been resolved, Chair, but in the same bundle, I just want uh, to... Well, tell, tell me first what the basis, whether it's an objection and what the basis yeah. is before we go and look in the document. Okay. I'm objecting. Yeah, what's the basis so, for yes. objection? The basis for objection is because what is now put to Ms. Memela is what Ms. Memela has already explained, that there was nothing wrong because they were not part of the evaluation nor adjudication team. Because this is a similar scenario to the Bezetian yes, scenario. Yes, I think leave it to her to, to deal with the, with okay. the question. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Ms. Mbandra. <coughs> uh, thank you, Ms. Mamela. It was after that uh, group returned from the U.S. <coughs> that that five-year component tender was cancelled uh, or retracted, correct? Uh, it was after that, Shane, and the reasons were stated. I remember the first one, if I, co I remember correctly, was um, because Pegasus, is the correct one? <coughs> yeah, Pegasus uh, had um, bidded okay, extremely low, which was good for us because we wanted to save, but they were going to subcontract uh, to, to AJ Walters. And that was not allowed in terms of the PPPFA. You cannot subcontract as a local company if you have bidded. You must at least take full responsibility of 75% of what should be done. Otherwise, that will be fronting. And then the second one was, uh, it was stated that it was to give the board uh, enough time to actually continue with the discussions regarding the MOU or partnership framework with, with AR. The, the challenge that that presents for me, Ms. Mamela, and I'd like to have your comment on it, is the facts seem to indicate that the board of SART, <coughs> while a tender is still open, goes to visit the facilities of one of the tenderers. And thereafter, that very board takes a decision to retract the tender in which there would have been other competitors. And the reason for doing so is that they want to embark on a partnership on what, with one of those bidders. And the subject matter of that partnership was going to be to provide the exact same services that the tender which was retracted would have provided to SART. Do you not see that as a concern? You see that as a concern, a chairperson? I do not. And I'll give you an example why. To get into a partnership requires an approval of the shareholder in terms of Section 54 of the PFMA. And before it even gets to that, there is no way that the board will be talking about what is uh, with regard to the component services without the approval of the shareholder. But like my understanding is that like the discussions between the board in terms of the board resolution that <clears throat> are in the file, they were not discussing anything that had to do with the tender. But their reasoning, like I mean to, 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 to allow to cancel the tender at that time was to ensure that nobody feels maybe infringed or feels prejudiced while they are discussing, as much as they are not discussing what is in the bid. Yes, Chair. Uh, the partnership was to provide the exact same services that the tender would have provided to SART. Is that not correct? Um, Chair, there were lots of, li there, there, were, there were a list of what uh, could have been part of the partnership as much as it was part of the list with M uh, Air France and II, Etihad and any other uh, supplier or maybe airline. But what I'm trying to put uh, on record for Ms. Hoffmeyer is that before that partnership could even go on, it will be approved by the shareholder. There is a long process that is followed there. So in terms of the uh, the, the, the non-binding MOU, that's when they, uh, they realized that, okay, they had to enter into a non-binding MOU that would guide their discussions, mm. you know, yes. But the decision to retract the tender and go on the partnership happened before any Section 54 approval, correct? 
remember, you can't uh, go and apply for Section 54 before you have everything in place. Like, there are a lot. That's why I said to the chair, there are processes that you have to follow first before you even get to the partnership approval. Yes. Yes. Ms. Mamela, my question was not what processes you have to follow. It was just a question of fact. Mm -hmm. At the time that the decision was taken to retract the tender and go on the partnership model, there was no Section 54 approval from the shareholder, was there? Yes, there was not. Thank because you. remember, like, the partnership model is something that was approved chaired by the Board of SAT as far back as 2012. So the partnership model is something that is actually just guiding them on how they move forward with the partnership framework. It, it does not require the approval at that time. But from the time that the partnership model was being pursued by the SART board, there was no competitive process being followed, was there? There was no competitive process. Uh, that's why I'm saying, Chair, it was something that was done by the board of Beckers, Mr. Mbondo, Mr. Mabizela and stuff before the other one that followed and the one that actually was in this uh, trip. Thank you. And then I'd like to go to another meeting that took place while that second five-year tender was open. Okay, before you get there, Ms. Hoffman, I'm sorry. Uh, Chair, can I add also on yes. the same trip? Mm -hmm. Just to, 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 to lay it out there to the public so that they understand that the trip was not just taken by certain people. After the, the board members came back, I remember uh, some of them were taking, taking photos of the facility to come back so that when they give feedback, they actually even have photos. And then after that, there was a trip uh, that was taken by the IT, the chief, the former chief IT officer of SAA. Uh, because if you remember also in that frame, partnership framework, there were also systems that, okay, they had uh, updated systems compared to SAA that uh, they could help us upgrade on. Um, and then there was um, technicians, I think like two groups of technicians went to the, their operations uh, facilities. So I'm just trying to put it out there that it was not just the board, like just to, to prove that it was something that uh, to, to, to ensure that we know, like the board knew what it was getting itself into before they even maybe continue and move forward to a partnership framework. That is my understanding, Chair. I don't sit in the board, and I'm not talking on behalf of the board. I understand that the commission will give the board their opportunity to state their side. So whatever that I'm putting here is my view. Yeah. Uh, before Ms. Hofmeyer moves uh, away from uh, the, the trip, uh, you said you were told that you had been included in the trip on the day of departure, is that correct? That's correct, Chair. Did you say that you were told that the reason why you were included in the trip mm -hmm. was so that you could advise um, the delegation with regard to not talking to uh, AAR people about the pending tender? Uh, to, to ensure that should AAR raise, because remember AAR does not know the rules of this country at that time. So it was to ensure that uh, should they, during the discussion of what they were there for, should they raise anything that have to do with the comp like component tender or anything like that, I will be able to say, you cannot discuss this, yeah, because this is part of the component tender and we have the tender running. Yes, Jim. Am I right to think that the reason why it would have been thought that you were the right person to play that role was because of your position as HOD of procurement? Yes, Chair, that was the reason. Yes, yeah. yes. Because I remember the board does not, um, I understand, they don't really know what um, uh, is, in, is, is, is being uh, what is, is, is part of the tender or maybe what is put to them. Remember when they take the submission to the board, it's just a, a brief summary of what they have written. And uh, yeah. yeah. Um, now, was there a rule that was to the effect that the members of the delegation 
could not discuss the tender with AAR people <coughs> on that trip? Not that there was a rule that I know of, Chair. As I said, that um, the, 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 the concern was more from the side of AAR, uh, being the private company from US and not knowing how we work in South Africa, that they don't raise some things or certain information that they're not supposed to talk to the board with. Yes, but mm. that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Your, what you, the reason that you say was given to you for including you in the trip suggests to me mm -hmm. that there was a rule that prohibited people who might have been in the delegation or all of them or some of them from discussing the, te the pending tender with anybody from AAR. There was uh, no rule. Are you saying there was no rule? There was no rule, Chair. I'll give you an example why I say so. Mm -hmm. For instance, on the um, five months tender that was ran afterwards to test the market, uh, the, the board had already, or maybe through the SAA legal, had appointed the transactional advisor from CDH to help them with regard to this non-binding MOU and also the discussions going forward. So um, at, at, at procurement, we were of the view that, okay, because they're discussing, remember, the, the, the reason for retracting the previous tender was to give the board a chance to discuss with them and, 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 and um, discuss with them like uh, issues of non-binding MOU. And then now we decided, okay, since that was the reason, we were going to exclude them when we ran the five-year tender. And then um, the transactional advisor from CTH advised against that, and, uh, because we already excluded them and the tender was already issued to those that were not discussing with the board. And they said, no, uh, because the board is not discussing anything that has to do with the component tender, so it will be prejudicial to AR uh, to exclude them from the tender. I'm sure uh, Ms. Hoffmeyer will see uh, that there was a uh, separate uh, tender issued for AR to include them, but it was easy because it was a closed bid, because we were just testing the market. It was not an open bid. So... You, you understand that when I talk about a rule, I'm not necessarily t talking about a rule that is written down. I'm also talking about any rule that everybody under may, may have understood <coughs> exists, even if it was an unwritten rule. Okay, I, I, I can agree with you there, Chair, because maybe that was the understanding at that time, and also what led us to decide to exclude AR from the five months tender at first. Mm. So to go back to this trip, at the time of the trip to AAR, yes. so uh, was there a rule, written or unwritten, that uh, either some of the people in the delegation or everybody in the delegation would not have been allowed to discuss the pending tender with AAR people? Uh, I, I don't remember any written rule, Chair. Uh, Unwritten? I, I don't remember any written rule, but uh, um, uh, the instruction that I'd be part of the tender came from them, and um, of course, like, I didn't know what to do because I didn't even have the visa, the US visa at that time. And I'm but sure, um, yeah. Who did this, who, who told you that this was the motivation for including you? Uh, I think I was called by the company secretary at that time, and said the board had decided that they should include... Uh, um, they should include you. Yes, Chair. Yes. Yes. And, and gave this reason as the reason. And gave this reason, but it was not written down. Yeah, yes, yeah, Chair. yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, now there may have been no written rule. You as head of procurement in the company, did you understand it to be, would you have understood it to be acceptable for any member or members of the delegation, and you know who was in the delegation, who were in the delegation, mm -hmm. would you have regarded it as acceptable 
if they discussed with AAR people the pending tender? Or would I have regarded it as acceptable? No, Chair. You, you, you would not have accepted it as acceptable? I, I wouldn't have regarded it as acceptable. Yes, yes. yes. And why would, why, why would you have thought it, was, it would be unacceptable? Because uh, the board is the one that makes the final decision. Therefore, um, to discuss that uh, current tender at that time, instead of discussing what they were going there for, which was the non-binding MOU, mm. will be something opposite to what they went there for. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, now, uh, the actual meeting, even if they didn't discuss the pending tender, mm -hmm. would you not have considered that the timing of the meeting could give rise to uh, perceptions that maybe AAR was being given special treatment, even if the, you and the board didn't think so, because there was still a tender that uh, was still to be finalized in which AAR was interested. Shouldn't the timing have been after the finalization? in um, terms of your understanding of acceptable behavior during uh, procurement processes? Um, my understanding from here, Chair, AR had already been disqualified. But um, just to answer your question. Um, yes, well, you must point out if I'm missing something because I could miss, yeah. I could be missing something. I thought that at that time, the, the tender was still pending. Yeah, no, it was pending, but a France, AAR was disqualified AAR at that time. AAR was not bidding at yes, the time. Yes, they were disqualified at that time. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Ms. Mamela, I, I don't... I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, if they were disqualified at the time, why would they, why would the board have been concerned that they shouldn't discuss the tender with a bidder who has been disqualified? because the, the, the bidder is not in the race. Um, I, I think maybe it was for reason that um, maybe for the future or for, I'm not sure, but uh, there are no specific dates here. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm just reading here that disqualified bidder, it says AR. So I'm not sure if it was by the, during the time of the trip it was disqualified already. But I know that it was disqualified on the full on, for not beating on the full spell list. Ms. Hoffman. It wasn't disqualified at the time of the trip. Not yet. No. Okay. And the reason for that is that uh, you can go to DD twenty two C. At page one zero six six. Thank you. This is uh, a letter written by Nisha Lalu. Who was that, Ms. Mela? Oh, you want me to read the... No, no, I'm just no. saying, who was Nisha Lalu? The, the letter con that uh, Ms. Hoffman is addressing uh, is written by Nisha Lalu and is addressed to... Chris. Okay, I will read uh, the t her title. She was Senior Manager Strategic Procurement. Uh, and what is the date of the letter? The date of the letter was 27 May 2015. That was after the trip to the U.S., correct? Uh, when was the trip to the U.S.? The 2nd to the 9th of May 2015. Oh, okay. So it was after. Yeah, it was after. And as I read this, feel free to read it if you haven't done for a while. It's a request to AAR that they extend the validity period of their bid, which was still open for a further six months, mm -hmm. while the process uh, on that tender was still being finalized. Okay. I see that. So it could not have been a reason uh, for the board to be able to have the trip in uh, early May. 
that the AAR had already been disqualified, correct? Yes, uh, Chair, we've just confirmed. Um, uh, and to answer your question, because you said, why then? Well, I was about I to say, <laughs> it resuscitates my question. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In terms of your understanding of acceptable uh, conduct and behavior during procurement processes, um, was the time when this trip was undertaken. Uh, the correct time when there was this tender pending. Uh, did this time, did, did the fact that the, there was this tender pending not make it un unacceptable for people, particularly those who would be involved in decision making, to undertake a trip to AAR? Okay, sure. Um, as I said, that I'm not a member of the board. And I will be speaking from the level that I had occupied. Yes. 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 And I, 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 sitting here, I don't uh, really understand the the duties and responsibilities of the board. But I do know that um, they are responsible to ensure of the um, continuous improvement within the company, and also implement certain proposals mm -hmm. that like, will see the company. Um, change for the better and act in the best interest of the company. So I would, from where I'm sitting, trying to think from their shoes that the reason why it now, was... I, I don't want you to try oh, and okay. think, <laughs> to put yourself in their shoes. Okay. I, I must want answer to, from my perspective. Yes, you okay. were the HOD for procurement uh, in the company. Here is the board deciding that it's going to undertake a trip to one of the bidders, in regard to a, I mean, one of the bidders, and there's a, a tender that's still pending in which they are bidding, and you are head of procurement. Was that acceptable in terms of procurement processes? So, you said, <laughs> in terms of procurement processes, uh, because the board does not sit in the bid evaluation committee, like, so we cannot involve the procurement processes. Uh, of course, I can um, answer you in terms of the decision makers. We go back to that question. Well, uh, although well, we had agreed that there well, was no return rule. Well, you, you, you emphasized earlier on mm -hmm. that the board is the, decision maker. the final decision maker. Yes. So I asked the question, mm. was it an acceptable thing for the board being the decision maker in the tender that was pending? for the board or some of its members to undertake a trip to one of the bidders uh, in regard to the tender while that tender had not been finalized? Um, we cannot help the perception, Jay. Mm -hmm. But if the board was going there to discuss something that has nothing to do with the tender, um, I don't think it was unacceptable, except they start discussing the bid or something so, to do with the tender. So are you saying as head of procurement in the company at the time, you would f have found it acceptable for the board, which was going to make a decision on a pending tender in which AAR was involved, to go and have meetings with AAR overseas? while that tender was pending? Uh, Chair, um, the board had a transactional advisor. Hmm? The board yeah. had a transactional advisor appointed to advise them exactly on those kind of discussions. But and you the were board, the HOD of procurement. I, I, I expect that uh, I expect that you would be the one official in the company who had the responsibility to alert even those members of the board who might not be au fait with some of the do's and don'ts in regard to procurement, to say, no, 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 I know you might not know, but 
this would taint your decision afterwards. If you if you do this, this would taint the procurement. Uh, I, would, I would I would expect that that would have been part of your responsibility. Is that understanding on my part of your role not correct? Chair, I don't advise the board. I, I, yes. I said in my earlier answer. Yes, um, you said so, but you yes. then said that you were phoned by the Cabinet Secretary who told you that the board wanted you to come along in, on the trip because they needed your advice in regard to uh, not discussing the tender with, uh, with um, AAR. So, it, and you agreed to go. Oh. Chair, it, it's as if like maybe I was given an opportunity to advise the board before they decided to go. They had already made that decision that they were going, doing, going to Chicago. And, and advising maybe the board or, or like, uh, about how I feel that maybe they should not go, I, I wouldn't have like, stopped them from going. I'm, I'm not sure if I understand your, your question because I, I just wanted to take you through the the roles of the board in terms of the essay. No, 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 I'm not looking at the roles of the board. I'm looking at the role of HOD. No, no, in, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, Chair, the role of a board in the SCM activities. No, 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 I'm not interested in that one. I'm interested in what you as HOD would have regarded as acceptable and whether what you would have said to whoever in the company that might do something that might taint the tender process, whether they would listen to your advice or not might be another, another matter because they might say, we have other responsibilities because of this and that and that. But as I understand your position, you, you have said that you would not have regarded it as unacceptable for the board to go and have this, uh, to go on this trip, uh, as long as they would not discuss the tender with AR, is that right? Yes, chair, and also just to add, um, yes, I do not sit in board meetings. Hmm? I do not sit in board meetings other than through an invite. Yes. So yes. to be expected to have advised the board. Outside the meeting, um, that's the part that I don't get. No, no, no. Um, that, I mean, it, it's, it's legitimate for you if you say, I didn't, cons well, maybe legitimate is not the right word, but uh, you may say, uh, I didn't consider it as part of my duty to advise the board because maybe there are other people whose duty it was to advise them even on these issues, not me. Maybe somebody more senior than you, I don't know. That's why I said I wanted to check with you whether my understanding of your role was the same as yours. But you, you, you say that you didn't think that it would have been your role to advise the board. I'm saying, Chair, also, I'm not even close to that level to advise the board. That's why I was saying the board has got a company secretary with that duty to advise the board. Okay. And there's GM Legal that sits in the board that yes. is supposed to advise the board around yes. those issues. And oh. just to, 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 to raise, uh, Chair, we did not, uh, I think we did not only um, visit AR also during that time. I remember myself and Ashla Figelip who also visited Air France and went and, and, and negotiated the, the price, their current price to start. Mm. Yes, but the board was not. The board members were not. We're not uh, yeah, we're not involved. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Hoffman. Apologies, that was another trip, correct, Ms. Mamela? That was another trip. Yes. Um, I just want to pick up one thing in your answers to the chair. You said this trip. I'm talking about the May second uh, to ninth of 2015 trip that you took with the board. Yeah. Um, I tried to take down your words. It had nothing to do with the tender. Do you it, recall saying that? I recall saying that because during that meeting I was there, I know that they did not discuss anything that had to do with the tender at that time. But it did have something to do with the tender in a different way, didn't it? What? Because it was a consequence of that uh, trip that when the board returned, they later decided to retract that very tender so that the partnership could be pursued with AAR. 
Chair, I'm saying uh, uh, at Chicago when the meeting took place, there was no discussion regarding the tender that was pending. So it's not that it had nothing to do with it, it was that there were no discussions about the pending tender. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I then want to move to an event a little bit later in May of 2015, because you'll remember this trip is the 2nd to the 9th of May. And then on the 27th of May, you had a meeting with AAR at SART. Do you recall that? I had a meeting with AR or with the team at AR. At, at uh, a team with the team at SART with AR. Yes. Yes, we had a meeting uh, with the team chair uh, from SART and with AR. Right. Mm. And uh, in your response uh, to Mr. Human's evidence, uh, in which he made reference to what Mr. Kenny had to say about that meeting on the 27th of May. You said to, uh, in response to Mr. Himan, uh, and I picked this up in your uh, statement in your application to cross-examine Mr. Himan at page six, paragraph 5.7. Uh, it's one sentence, I'll read it to you uh, for, the, for the benefit of the record. Okay. It is not true that Mike Kenny advised me that SART should not be engaging with a component support bidder, as I was not the one who was calling the shots, what would be discussed and what not. Do you recall saying that in your statement? I recall saying that. So do you uh, maintain in your evidence today that Mr. Kenny did not warn you about going to that meeting? Which with meeting? The, the 27 May meeting that I was talking about. But he was there as well. Uh, no, he was not. Okay. Um, Is that we have not the one minutes? of those where he says he was and she says he was not? No, no, no. She's, or that's, you say those are he different was ones. And then can, she's... You, can yes, you? This is one where there's at least email correspondence that suggests Ms. Mamela did know that he wasn't going to go. Oh, okay. Can you direct me yes, to that? Yes, certainly. But yeah. before we go to the letter, I just want to understand whether it remains your evidence today that he did not warn you about going to the meeting on the 27th of May. I don't understand why would Ms. Kenny, Mr. Kenny advise me uh, from not going to the meeting because we were all given um, instruction to engage the representative of AR as some of our, um, um, what you call this, technicians have gone to the AR facilities. Mm. So, and uh, now they were doing the same coming here. Uh, coming to, uh, to to site to check the MRO facilities as well. Mm. Yes, Ms. so I, I, I don't understand. Thank you, Chair. I understand that there is pressure for time, but I just want Ms. Hoffmeyer to observe the order. If the witness is saying, can I please be referred to a particular document in order to confirm? <laughs> Because that document that she wanted to be referred to, I'm not saying she's correct, is a document which would assist in showing whether she is correct in saying this Mr. Himen was there. So the question cannot precede the document because by the time she goes to the document, then already there will be a problem. So can, I, I know the rush. But yes, but I think it is the kind of thing that when you re-examine, you can go back and say, do you remember you asked such and such a question and you wanted to have a look at a document and Ms. Hofmeyer asked a question before you could look at a document. Let's look at that document and then you, t you, you take care of it. Uh, Chairperson, I I'm not being argumentative yes. because it is today. I just yes. want to explain something. Yes. The reason why there is an English word, contemporaneous, Unfortunately, that, that is the only word. I, I can't translate it into your language. The reason why there is that English word contemporaneous is because the trust and the value of the evidence and acuity comes with contemporaneousness. I am going to re-examine on evidence that was given on Friday. Already that evidence is dead. So we cannot kill the evidence more that even when a witness is saying Please refer me first to a particular document to ascertain this fact that is left for cross-examination because Ms. Yume now is forcing her to admit that this gentleman advised her not to go. She wants to demonstrate contemporaneously that actually this gentleman was in that meeting. That is my plea, Chairperson. I won't press it further. Yes, no, no, no. Um, 
You see, it has happened that uh, I ask her a question and she wants to go to a document. But I know that uh, before we go there, I would like her to give an answer to a, a certain question. It doesn't mean we won't go there, but her answer might make it unnecessary to go there. So as long as in the end, <clears throat> if there is still a need, we go there. But the need might fall away during the exchange, you see. So, 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 so I might ask a question, and she understands it in a certain way and wants to go to a document. But I see that for my purposes, I don't need the document. Then I ask her. But if having answered, she still feels that for her answer to be meaningful, she needs to go to the document, then she mentions that again. I would still like us to go to that document, and then we take it from there. That will maintain the contemporaneous. Uh, That's OK, all right. Thank, Thank you, you. Miss of Mayor. Thank you. Um, the document is uh, that I was going to take you to after the question, Ms. Mamele, is in DD 22C at page 16, sorry, 1263. 1263 It's DD22C at page 1263 Now this is an email chain uh, that was attached to Mr. Human's affidavit uh, in respect of which Ms. Sambo, uh, Ms. Mamela, you received a Rule 3.3 notice. Uh, and so just to follow the train chronologically, Chair, I suggest we start uh, at the bottom of page 1263. Uh, just before we proceed, mm -hmm. are we still on matters connected with the trip? Uh, so this is, we've returned from the trip and now yeah. there's a meeting later in May, on the 27th of May. And this yes. email correspondence relates to that meeting. Yes. No, before we do that, Miss mm. Mamela. Yes, sir. I would have expected that while the delegation was uh, visiting S AAR, mm -hmm. and I think it was, was it over four days or five days or, or I think it was seven that? days, the second About to the ninth. Days. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Seven days. Uh, I, I think some right. people might have been there for a bit shorter, Ms. Mamela. Or were seven you to the ninth? My my record says the second to the ninth of May. Oh, I th yeah, I, I I don't remember, Chair, but like I think it was cut short. It was not more than three days, okay. if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, well, uh, somebody will will check. Mm -hmm. I I assume that as your hosts, uh, AR AR would have. Uh, hosted the delegation in dinners and so on, socializing as, mm. as one would expect when one is a host. Is that right? Jim? I'm saying I would expect that AAR, being your host, would have uh, had dinners with uh, the delegation and so on. <laughs> uh, uh, is my assumption correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> your assumption is correct. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right. Um, okay. And just insofar as that's concerned, I'm looking back at the Facebook posts that you made at the time, which would assist us with the dates. Um, but amongst the things that AAR provided to you was um, a private jet, is that correct? Yes, like we flew to, from Chicago to Indianapolis and then from Indianapolis to Miami. Because it was something that had to be done within in, in one day. In their private jet. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's there, it's owned yes. by them, I'm not sure. Yes. I can't confirm that. Okay. Yeah. And did they pay for the transportation by the limousine uh, back to the jet? Payment? Yes, did they cover the costs of the limousine ride back to the jet? Our oh, understanding is that's their limousine, I don't know. That's their limousine, mm -hmm. okay, thank oh. you. Um, right, so just back to the 27th of May, if we may. Sorry, now I've lost my page reference because I was it's, going back. It's one, 
Um, one, two, six, three, one, was two, it? Six, three. Yeah, yeah, great, yeah. thank you. Okay, so we're at one, two, six, three, and we start at the bottom. Uh, there's an email from uh, Sonia Lopez to yourself, Ms. Mamela. Do you see that? Yeah. And uh, Sonia Lopez, where was she from? From AR, it's a return here. And if you'll just read, sorry, that's the date of that email? It's 26 May 2015. And what does she say to you in that email? Can you please arrange transportation to pick up Ken Hain, Chris Fides, and Cheryl Jackson at 10.30 a.m. on Wednesday, May, 20, May 27th, from the Intercontinental Hotel? Thank you. And then you deal with that in an email above it between yourself and uh, Mr. Kenny. Do you see that? Yes. So what do you say to Mr. Kenny in the next email? Hi, guys. Please take note. Thank you. And then if you go a page earlier, because now we're following it chronologically. So if you go to 1262. And then Mr. Kenny responds, will do. Will do. And that's on the 27th of May, 2015. Yes. Correct. And then uh, will you read us the next email from you to him on the 27th of May, 2015? Uh, At what page? Uh, 1262, okay. Chair. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Kenny. Could you please let me know when your guy goes to fetch them so I can leave Premier Hotel to there? Further, take note that we will be using the operational purchasing boardroom. Thank you. Then if you go back a further page, one to 1261. Yeah. What does Mr. Kenny respond to you? Hi, Nansas. I'm not sure when the guy will leave site, but will be at the hotel at 10.30. I will not make it the meeting. And what do you respond to Mr. Kenny above that? I say why. Why, question mark, I think with a sad face emoticon. Is that right? Is it a sad face or a smiley face? I oh, I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's a smiley face. <laughs> <You> <laughs> tell me. Well, I, I can never make out this I can't, this face. indeed. Yeah, indeed. I, I'm sure you've noticed me so me I smile a lot. So it can't it could, it, no, it might have been a... If, well, if it was a smiley face, then you were happy face. that he wasn't but coming. But I don't, I don't think you would say, oh ask God. why, <laughs> if you were happy. Yes, indeed, indeed. <laughs> you know, it's changing and getting back to me that I was happy that Ms. Kenny yeah, was not going. That's fine. No, I really no. don't understand that. No, I had just assumed it was sad because you were disappointed that he wasn't coming, but that might have been an unfair we assumption We are still on, on fact-finding mission, right, Ms. Hoffman? Yes, because Thanks. it's related to his response okay. at 1260. Okay. What did Mr. Kenny respond to you? Uh, and I understand that. Uh, okay, where is this? After it's at the why? bottom of 1260. So okay. you've asked why, and then Mr. Kenny responds as to why he won't be attending the meeting. Okay, he said, I have a, I have a meeting with a customer regarding work in Uganda taking place in Kilani and concerned about discussing component support issues with someone who is the bidder in the process, and the process is still going, still ongoing, corporate governance issues. However, I will not be available for this meeting anyway due prior arrangement which have been confirmed. So, Chair, here in this email, he's raising his concerns. Mm. There's no way where he advised me not to go to a meeting. Maybe Ms. Hoffman is still going to uh, show me that email. Wait no. for her to ask you yeah. questions. Let's go to your response because as I read what Mr. Kenny is saying there, he's saying he's concerned about going because you'd be discussing component support issues with somebody who's a bidder in the process and the process is still ongoing. What was your response to Mr. Kenny above that? He's saying and uh, concerned about discussing component support issues with someone who is the bidder. Yes. He's not saying you because you will be. Um, yeah, so I, I would like us to read the email as it is and not uh, put uh, words that are not there. No, I was just trying to give the context for your response. Mm -hmm. What was your response, Ms. Mamela? And then I said that the process has been put on hold. I'm sure it's when then it was retracted. No, it's not yet. Okay. Yeah. Because actually, on the very same day, that was when we looked at the letter previously where AAR had been asked to extend the validity period of its bid. So it was very much still alive. But okay. you said to Mr. Kenny, the process has been put on hold. And then what did Mr. Kenny respond? I understand that it is on hold, but that means it's, it is still open and ongoing. Yes. Yeah. So, Ms. Mamela, do you stand by your evidence that Mr. Kenny did not advise you not to attend a meeting with a bidder while a tender was still open? Uh, this is not what his email is saying, Chair. That's not my understanding of his email. He was concerned for himself because he's saying he was attending a meeting with a customer from Uganda and 
is is raising his concern with me, his colleagues. Uh, why he the, the, what the discussions that are, are, are taking place with the bid, uh, whilst the bid is still ongoing. But you didn't have any difficulty going to the meeting while the bid was still open. Uh, no, I did not have any difficulty, because I mean the, it was the technicians from AR as much as we had the technicians from SAT going to AR. Did it not give you pause for concern that somebody who wasn't even in the procurement space was not willing to go to a meeting with a bidder while the bidder was while the bid was still open? Um, sure. Um, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to answer this question. You say, yes, I did have concern, or no, I didn't have concern. I didn't have concern, Chair, because they were discussing what was in the MRO Thank uh, you. hangers, yes. Thank you. And then I'd like to go to one other um, interaction in this period before the bid was retracted. And that is something that Ms. Jackson said in an email on the 5th of June 2015. Where is I'd that? like to take you to that. It's at um, Exhibit DD 22C, the file that we're in, at page 1278. Uh, apologies, I, I have to do something before that in the chronology. Um, so there's this meeting on the 27th of May that you attended, is that correct? That's the one we've looked at previously. Or the one that Mike Kenny had a concern of? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Then I just want to establish, because there's an email that suggests to me you had a, a discussion after that meeting with Ms. Jackson. So could we go to that? That's at page 1274. 1274. Yes. Um, what is that document? Oh, uh, this is an email coming from Mitchell on the 30th of May, 2015. Uh, and to whom is it sent? It's sent to Cheryl Jackson, Bongani Moore, and Art Bagas of, of, of Morning Tide. Is that uh, Mr. Rafik? Bagus, yes. whom we've heard evidence about. Thank yeah. you. Now, um, I, what makes me think there was a discussion after the 27 May meeting is because in the third line there you'll see you say, good afternoon, I hope my email finds you well. I refer to the discussion we had on the 29th May 2015 and wish to confirm the following. Do you mm -hmm. see that? Yes, I see that. Do you recall that discussion? Was it telephonic? Was it in person? I recall, Shay, it was in person, a meeting, a meeting in person. Right, so there's the meeting on the 27th, then there's a meeting on the 29th. Were you at this stage responsible for most of the interactions with AAR? Um, Shay, can, can, can I ask, I know that we are actually running out of time, I would like to read this. Sure. Uh, if yes, I, if yeah, I, okay, you want to, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You want I don't to know read if you it to yourself? Or? Yeah, I just yeah. want to read it okay. uh, quickly so that like, I'm able to... To, to uh, respond properly, yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if you also want me to, to read for everybody. No, no you either. can read for yourself. For it's okay.
Okay. Okay. Are you ready to answer or do you want the question to be repeated? I just asked, at this stage, were you the person mainly responsible for the interactions with AAR? Um, um, I, I don't know if you have noticed that the, the email is on about supply development be initiatives and stuff. Uh, well, uh, I haven't uh, read yes. it carefully. Okay. Yeah, but so the, this is the question is factual. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't need you to look at the email. At the email. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just uh, talking about interaction with AR because she's yeah. doing AR, okay. yeah. and there were uh, apparently BE companies that mm. they had selected on their own. Then. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this was in the, with regard to that meeting mm. that took place, and I was advising them on the stand of site on mm. site. Yeah. Sorry. But she, she's asking whether at that stage, mm -hmm. and we are talking end of May, yeah. 2015, you were the person mostly responsible the person mostly responsible at SAT for interactions with uh, with uh, AAR. There is a board resolution chair that gives Mr. Musazwani that authority, not me. No, no, no. Let's not talk about the authority. Mm -hmm. Factually, is it what was happening? Were you the person? He may have been given authority, mm -hmm. but he might have decided he will ask you to do most of the interactions and report to him. So the question is looking at the factual position as to, as opposed to what was the legal position. Did you have authority or not have authority? But the question is simply whether uh, you were the person that was mostly interacting with AAR at that time. No, You, you might not know, you might know. No, sir. You were not. Yeah, this meeting was not uh, with a about AR or with AR. It was regarding supply development in BE. But it was a meeting that AR attended, correct, on the 29th one of May. Of the, one of the employees of AR attended, together okay. with the like I mean local black owned representative. Right. And that was Ms. Jackson who attended, is that correct? Yes, that was the employee of AR. Thank you. Mm. And then I would like to go to the email that I went to incorrectly in the chronology. That's at 1278. Uh, so before we go to that yes. email, uh -huh. can I read then uh, what, at the end, just at the end, not the whole meeting, or not the whole email. Yeah, on page 1274. 1274, Jim. Yes, read. Right. Kindly take note that as discussed yesterday, um, SAT had already identified some of the local black-owned companies, mostly of which are owned by black women, to participate in the program Enterprise Supply Development and benefit out of the potential transaction. As, advi as advised yesterday, as, and as initially agreed between management of AR and SAT, it will benefit both the parties if SAT and AR work together in concluding an, any kind of agreement that will regulate the empowerment program. Um, so it shows that what was discussed there and what I had advised them from that uh, point of view in terms of supply development. Thank you. And then if we can go to 1278. Now this is, if you pick it up at the bottom of the page, uh, it appears to be an email that Ms. Jackson writes to... Um, a number of her colleagues, including John Holmes, Rahul Shah, etc. Do you see that? I see that. Um, and we, I'm not going to read the whole email into the record, but it starts off by saying, Hi all. Last week, Chris Fiddis, Ken Hine, and I met with the SART team and leadership. Mm. Below is a scope of work and list of initiatives that SART would like to work on with AAR work with AAR on or explore further as part of a partnership. And then the email goes on over two pages, but the part of it that I'm interested in is at page 1280. Hmm? If you go to page 1280. 1280? Yes. See... I do apologize, I should have indicated this was an email written on the 4th of June 2015, Chair. Apologies for that. But at, the, at 1280, Ms. Jackson is setting out a timeline there. 
And the first item on the timeline, she indicates is June 5, colon, SART, PBH, RFP, cancellation becomes official. Do you see that? Yeah, I see that. How would Ms. Jackson have known on the 4th of June 2015 that there was going to be a retraction of the tender that was still open at that stage? Yeah, uh, I, can't answer. I can't answer for her, Jane. So you weren't party to any meetings at which that was communicated to Ms. Jackson by SART <coughs> officials? Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't, uh, I don't remember. Because yeah. it was only actually ever retracted on the 22nd of June. Do you recall that? And then when was this one? This was, she was writing it on the 4th of June, and she's anticipating that it's going to be cancelled the next day, or at least officially cancelled the next day. You, you, I wouldn't know how she knew that. How she got the information. Yes. Would it concern you that she had that information before the decision had officially been taken? Yes, Chair, that will be a concern. Thank you, Chair. I see we have gone just over the lunch break, uh, so yes. maybe a com convenient time to yes. adjourn. Uh, let's adjourn for, for lunch, and we'll resume at 5 past 2. Uh, Chair, um, I see. Oh, Ms. Uh, Badra. Maybe this is an opportune time to just place on record that we were told yesterday that Ms. Hofmeyer has only 30 minutes. Yes. After which she will finish. I'm not saying she must finish, but yes. I'm just saying yes. this is how difficult our re-examination is going to be. Because mm. yesterday I had already asked for an estimation of a day. Mm. And we are now again meeting all this information that is in emails and mm. which may be necessary. So when we ask for more time, mm -hmm. I just want chairperson to make a comparison to see how difficult it is to wrap these things up. I, do, I don't want <coughs> to irritate chairperson. Well, but do remember that uh, part of the delay is the interruptions that have happened. And I'm not saying that the interruptions were not legitimate. I'm just saying uh, as reality, we have had uh, interruptions. Certainly, uh, it's been more than uh, we normally see in these proceedings. So, as I say, I'm not saying illegitimate, but um, certainly that has contributed. Let's see how it goes. Thank Is you. Is that all right? Okay, we'll take the lunch adjournment and resume at five past two. Thank you, Chair. We adjourn. All rise. You don't think so? Oh. Did you get the judge? You don't want to hear me, do you? You do not did you want get to the judge? Me off. Hey, but we need that shot. I was what? There's always a light crossing at one. Oh, but that one, I ask her because I started yesterday in Yambu, so you tell her. Because sometimes I can you might go out and then there's a light crossing.